Hello and welcome to the latest Safer West Mercia podcast. My name is John Campion and I'm the West Mercia Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, my guests on this episode, I will let introduce themselves. Hi, I'm PC Jenkins, the student officer for West Mercia Police. So very, very exciting. So student officer, so how long does that mean that you've uh, been with West Mercia? I started on the 25th of April this year. 25th of April. Now, I've been very lucky to see you pass out from your very initial training. So how long ago was that? Uh, about four weeks ago. So four weeks. So that, yeah. so that means you've had four weeks out on, on division with your shift. I certainly have. How's it gone so far? It's very eye-opening. Um, nothing's been bad. It's all been good. Yeah, it's interesting. So, um, just uh, telling the uh, the listeners to the podcast, where where are you based? Where's where's about in West Mercia? Is your is your uh, is your shift based? Tutor shift is going to be in Worcester, and there's talks of moving it back to Malvern after, but hopefully I'll stay in Worcester. So Worcester, uh, being a busy uh, busy city in in the middle of Worcestershire. Um, uh, have you had a busy uh, first uh, first uh, four weeks? Have you seen seen lots of things? Been lots to lots of jobs. No two days has been the same. It's always been busy. Goodness. Which is good. <laughs> what um, what was your first shift, and what time of day was it? So, Night shift on a Monday. Night shift on a Monday, and it was just as we were having all that hot weather. It must have been uh, four or so weeks ago. It just broken. Uh, I think okay. luckily again on Saturday night it was cooler. Ah, uh, okay. But, yeah. So um, obviously we won't go into into details of the of the individual incidents, but what kind of the range of the things that you've seen in the in in the last four weeks? I've seen a lot of drunk people. Right. Um, not just on a Saturday night. Uh, domestic incidents, escorting prisoners to court. Um, recently, the Muller site with the protesters. You know, I'm lucky enough to jump in on an armed raid for the road closures. Goodness. That was good. <laughs> That's a lot in four weeks. Yeah, a lot. It, um, and what drove you to do it? You know, you're, you've been through the process before joining, you've done your initial training, you've just done your first first four weeks out there um, on the streets in West Mercia. What, what made you want to do it? What made you want to join the ranks of West Mercia Police and also want to be a police officer? When I was a teenager, I wanted to be in the Navy, but medically I'm not fit enough. So policing sort of seemed like a sideline from, not military, it's the same sort of line almost. But then I wasn't mentally old enough. So I went away, worked in care for 13 years, uh, learned a lot about a different range of people, learned about life as well. And thought, just as COVID hit, it was like now, it's now or never. I think COVID being a wake up call for a lot of people, it was now's the time to do it. Doing the things that you want to do, as it were, you know, live life, as they say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I'm very lucky as commissioner to be able to talk to lots of different people who join West Mercia Police, and, and the stories are often very different in terms of the why's, but there's always that sense of, you know, it's something I've wanted to do. Yeah. I made the jump to do it, and sometimes it happens early in life, sometimes um, a, a little later. So, how did you find the uh, application process? You've uh, obviously, just uh, completed your first uh, bit out on the streets. You um, uh, did uh, initial training uh, before that, but tell us about the process of when you decided to join and now. How, how was it work? The reason why we're interested is that people listening uh, might be thinking exactly the same as you over uh, I, I want to join, but perhaps that need to know a little bit of information or indeed uh, need that trigger to, to want to do it. So uh, it, it's not a quick process, uh, is it? No, definitely not. It took me personally two years. Um, I applied a couple of weeks after our first lockdown of 2020 for COVID and then that and actually getting in and taking the oath was two years almost to the day. So um, <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend anybody have to know it soon, soon as they put their application in because you'll be in trouble. But yeah, it, I think we had it slightly different to previous cohorts because police had to think of new ways of interviewing because it wasn't face to face, it was all done via Zoom, which I'd never touched, <laughs> never heard of, or never touched before COVID. Still not a fan, but it does its job. Um, so yeah, that was 
I really like the situational question at the start because that really gets you thinking before you've committed whether it's something you could actually tolerate because they're very close and similar to things you would deal with in your life. So it's good. It's a good lesson. So you, it took you two years. Some some uh, some people it does take slightly shorter. Some people slightly slightly longer. But it's in depth as well, isn't it? In very. terms of the different stages, it's not a. It's not a, uh, an easy hurdle to get over because of the role that you do in society is a very important one Definitely. and the training and investment is expensive and long so that rigour beforehand and do you pass every stage? I did, thankfully. I'd make sure you know all about your immediate family's backgrounds in case there's any surprises that may come out in vetting that you don't know about or you don't want to know about but you're going to find out about. So, <laughs> do you know? So you obviously have been through the initial training, as I've referred to a couple of times, it's primarily based here, is that right, at, at Hibler? It was all based here, yeah. And, um, and how did you find that? How did you find the, uh, the, the experience of that uh, initial bit from the, the day you arrived and met a whole new a load of colleagues, you met whole new people that would be training you? How did it feel? First day we all walked around like we were scared. It was almost <laughs> like going back to school again, like year sevens. Big scary world, <laughs> don't know where you're going, have no clue about anybody about it around you. And then by the end of the 16 weeks, you kind of start to feel a bit more, yeah, I'm ready to go out now. I'm, I am a police officer now, rather than day two when you've got a uniform feeling like you're playing dress up. So, yeah. And is that the transition, is it, in training between the, uh, oh, this is a costume, so to actually this just represents what I, what I do? It was for me. Um, it, obviously, you're really proud to put it on. But because you essentially know nothing about the job, obviously you've got your background information, but you don't know your powers and, all, and stuff like that. So actually put the uniform on then, it's kind of like, mm, I could be going to a Halloween party as a police officer. <laughs> so you, it's quite an impressive costume though, isn't it? <laughs> it's a very expensive one as well. <laughs> so you're wearing that full dress uniform, pass out, feeling, yeah, I, I can go and do this now. It was very hot the uh, the day you guys passed out, yes, wasn't it? Yes, I don't envy any of the senior officers in their wool no. at all. At least we only had shirts and cravats on, but... I don't have to feel sorry for our senior police officers, <laughs> but uh, they were warm yeah, uh, yeah. that day. And, yeah. uh, and all credit to them, my hat goes off to them. The, um, as a, a civilian member in the policing system, stood um, with the Chief Constable um, and your family and friends watching on, watching you guys, uh, repeat your oath really really powerful connection between uh, you know why you wear the uniform and the role um, that, that that you do yeah. um in terms of your training what was the bit you enjoyed the most was there uh, was there some uh, bits that oh, i really enjoyed that that was a that was a really good bit ask any officer i bet they'll say it's the lst week the officer, officer safety training week where we get to throw each other around arrest <laughs> each other essentially legally beat each other up for a week after nine weeks of being sat in a lecture theatre. Goodness. Um, that will be... The rough and tumble, as it were, are techniques that you guys have yeah. to use sometimes in the most um, uh, you know, violent situations that sometimes happen yeah. out in, in our community. Yeah. And um, turning to uh, out and about uh, the last four weeks, um, is, is, is there any surprises that you've had in terms of the the difference between the reality of everyday policing and the, and the training that, uh, that you went through before? Obviously in training you're taught the gold standard of everything, which as it should be, but that you don't have time to put that in place. As much as we'd like to, you just sometimes need to do whatever gets the job done safely. So the practical application of your training in the everyday, yeah. everyday world of policing? Yeah, it, it, it's very different training school but it's still part of the job yeah. and uh, what's your tutor constable like they, well they might not be listening but i suppose they might but uh, <laughs> uh how have you found that how have you found the uh, level of level of support and, uh, and and other bits that you would need to transition from being a student to being a fully fledged um experienced police officer i'll take my heart to anybody that volunteers to become a tutor because they're not looking after themselves, they've got at least three other people. They've got yourself, they've got themselves, a tutor, tutee, and they've got whoever we're dealing with. And then on top of that, everybody else who they've got to make sure is safe. So 
they don't get enough recognition. Do you think you've seen that transition a bit in your four weeks of being the, not the liability, but the person they've had to have their eye on, and maybe just in those four weeks it's a little less of an eye, uh, an eye on or? I think less than having two eyes on me, I've kind of got one. <laughs> I'm still a liability, but not. <laughs> not, a, not a full one? Yeah. It, uh, it, it is funny isn't it because that 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 relationship that you all build up or well, will have already built up with your your, your tutor mm -hmm. really really important and often talk to long and uh, sometimes senior police officers now still talk about their their, um, their tutor that they had back mm -hmm. back in the day when they started sometimes decades decades ago mm -hmm. um you you went through the process you've done your initial training you you're out there on the ground. Um, if there was somebody listening or watching today um, that was thinking about um, wanting to join as a student officer, what, what would you say to them? What would be the things that you would uh, you, you would highlight to them? Think long and hard about it. It's not an easy process. I mean, you've got your first 16 weeks where you're not out. So you are doing Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, which seems like a really nice thing at the time. But with that comes all the university work. Which once you go out on shift, you've got to think about on your rest days, which mm. is fine. You know that from the very start. Um, I would encourage anybody to do it. Anybody that's not um, academic at all, like myself, I'm not in any shape or form. Got dyslexia. Don't let it put you off. There is support there for anybody that hated school. You, you can get through it. So the um, that that maybe potential myth around or oh, it's really academic and I'm not academic, so therefore I can't do it. That's a, mm -hmm. that that's a myth that people shouldn't have in their have in their mind. Yeah, I think um, talking to a lot of people, not just officers but people in the public, I think the whole PC, PCDA thing and having to have a degree or work towards a degree to join the police will put a lot of people off. So just for our listeners, PDCA. PDCA. Police degree. Yeah, I don't know. Can we can we it up? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, so constable. PDCA is a uh, police constable de degree apprenticeship, I think, is the uh, is the right acronym. So that's right. So there's three routes. So there's the uh, there's the apprenticeship, as if people have got their um, got a degree and convert. Or indeed, have got a police-related degree, and uh, I think it's really interesting the uh, the different routes in and yeah. the support that is that is out there. Because I, like you, not academic. No. Um, as as a child, I I uh, was never in the top top sets and uh, and suffered with dyslexia. Um, and indeed, um, it wasn't until later in my childhood that I got some support to understand how I did access learning uh, with dyslexia. And so it's good to hear those types of things are are included. And indeed, should reassure those that are listening or watching that actually uh, there is the right help out there. Mm. Um, in terms of, um, is there something you don't enjoy? Is there something that, you've, uh, that you're have yet to fully uh, enjoy or is it literally just so new um, that uh, everything's all shiny and uh, there's nothing you don't enjoy yet? I don't enjoy the IT systems <laughs> <laughs> when they work. Um, the paperwork. It's the paperwork. It is the paperwork. I mean, paperwork comes with the job, but streamline maybe we could work on streamlining some of it busy yeah. police officer equals lots of uh, lots of paperwork afterwards yeah yeah and lots of cases at the same time juggling it all at the same time getting that it's, done it's going to be interesting the, uh, one of the things that i ask um, all of our um, people that we talk to on the safe west mercy podcast is what would you do if you were um a pcc for a day what is it uh, what would be the thing that you uh, that you would do get bored <laughs> <laughs> I only go get bored sat in this lovely building all day. Um, I'm sure you're very busy and you enjoy it, but it's not for me. It's not for you. I, I need to be out and doing about stuff. Yeah, seeing different things all the time. Well, as a, a police officer in West Mercy, you definitely get to see that day in day out. And very at the beginning of this conversation, you talked about the um, huge breadth of things that you uh, have experienced. No two day, days being the same, I think, is, uh, right. is something you said. No two days have been the same. Well, let's hope it's the same in 30 years' time. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm expecting us to be here at 60, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know, we, uh, we, we might do. I might be in the offices by then. <laughs> But we, uh, that's what we, uh, well, we uh, hopefully, whichever way, we hope you're still involved in policing uh, in West Mercia. Um, I do want to thank you for joining us today and talking a little bit around your, um, around your experience as a, as a student police officer. But most of all, I want to thank you for wanting to step forward and be a police officer here in West Mercia. Um, being a police officer is, is a unique role in our society, standing on that thin blue line, um, keeping our community safe. Uh, is a really amazing thing to do for your community and I want to thank you for going through the process and indeed uh, the learning that you're now experiencing and uh, it is a job like no other and I'm glad that you, you want to do it so, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, your, con your explanation of some things that you will experience might be that trigger to those listening or watching to say I'm going to do it, I'm going to put that application in. I'll hope to do. I'll hope to do. I would encourage anybody that wants to join to join. And uh, West Mercy Police are recruiting uh, at the moment. If you look at either their social media or on their website, there are all of the routes, uh, entry routes into, into policing. You can register your interest and have an initial uh, conversation uh, with somebody. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, you for uh, joining the latest Safer uh, West Mercia uh, podcast. My name is uh, John Campion. I'm the West Mercia Police and Crime Commissioner. I'm very grateful to be uh, joined by uh, my colleague uh, as a student officer uh, to talk about her experience um, uh, within West Mercia Police.